Hello everyone, this is Vicki Verley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. And we're to here today to look at the new moon in Pisces. And it's occurring on different times, different places. As far as the U.S. times we've got, it's going to be on, uh, on out the coast. Pacific time, it's going to be 2.28, the last day of February, February 28th. And then it's going to be uh, Eastern time, where I am. It's going to be 3 in the morning on March 1st. So, but it's right, it's happening, and it's uh, 10 degrees, Pisces, 39, here we are, 1039 down here. So this is a cool chart, we're getting into these crazy uh, designs again, with the Merkabas and everything, with the aspects, again, this would be a really awesome mandala. I see so much stuff in here. Uh, when I very first just opened that chart, it was like all signs point to Lilith. You know, that's what I saw, but now I'm looking at it again, uh... And yeah, there's some different things. There's that. There's this three-dimensional gem uh, shape pointing up toward Lilith or spinning and rotating. But this uh, this splay from the south node up here is uh, pretty cool too, like a s light, light in the air, searchlight, I feel. I want to use the word searchlight. And then I'm seeing here with the, this is like the hourglass, the sands of time. And it, it could also be um, insect-like here. And uh, I was seeing something else with like an arrow before, too. I'm, I'm not getting it right now. But you know, it's pretty, the aspect uh, lines are pretty magnificent. Uh, but what's, what's really happening here is we've got this um, grand square or grand cross in the card, I mean, excuse me, yeah, cardinal signs here with the nodes. Yeah, so there's just so much happening. I know I'm jumping all over. I'm just kind of looking at broad strokes, and then we can dig in and get a little deeper into some of this stuff. So there's the Grand Cross and Cardinal with the nodes. Um, the other thing that's happening is Mars is going retrograde later that day, and the following day Saturn's going retrograde. So that's something we, I want to take a look at, too. Um, and the, the other thing is Jupiter a few days later is going direct, finally. So that's, you know, something really good. But this is powerful. And I know, you know, the equinoxes, the spring equinoxes, really uh, the first day of spring and everything. But the new moon in March, I always feel kind of that's got to, you know, it's, it's spring to me. Because where I live, you know, we've been drenched in snow. Right now I'm recording this a couple weeks ahead of time. And there's, you know, the snow drifts are, you know, almost up to my waist out there. From every, It's just snow and cold, freezing cold, no, you know, zero degrees out it's just been a horrible horrible winter and around here in march you know you do start to see the little bulbs you know the little the crocuses start peeking out the snow crocuses start coming out you know so march it's like it's almost over <laughs> we made it through another winter and it's almost over so i think of this as although of course the equinox is the big one but i think of this as a new you know, a precursor to spring, you know, I guess. The, okay, the other thing before we really get into it is the, uh, I know this is Eastern time, but that Ascendant, the Ascendant is on that degree. 25 Sag, almost 26, which is the galactic center. So I just, and here, any time, you know what I'm, I'm noticing, this is pretty crazy. It seems like, I'm not sure, I have to go back and watch all the videos, but it seems that lots of, a lot of the times when the galactic center degree is getting activated, these inner aspects start looking like this. You know, I'm just I'm just having a huge aha moment right as we speak here. It's like I have to go back and look. But when I was I remember talking about the uh, galactic center before, and when there was all these great aspects, gem. I'm getting chills down my back, so I think this is a true thing. I'm, we're hitting on it. I'm hitting on something. Uh, so that's there. So even if you disregard because this is only Eastern time, this 26 degree Sag ascendant. Um, there's still plenty, there's all there everywhere. Venus is at 26, you know, the nodes are at 29, Mars is at 27. You know, so it's being, a, it's being act, activated all over the place. Okay, so since we're up here with Mars, Mars conjunct the North Node and about to go retrograde. So at this time, this point right here, Mars is, um, it's standing still. It's, you know, it's already, it's stopped and it's about to move backwards. And it's with the North Node. So, you know, the North Node, again, is always what we aspire to do in this life, or the direction we should be taking, or the High Road, you could even look at it like that, the North Node being the High Node, Road, the High Node, <laughs> the High Road, and the South Node being, you know, the Low Road. 
but Mars there. So that's drive and ambition, energy and everything, and Mars is going to go retrograding. You know, Mars retrograde is a funky energy. It's about, you know, no matter what, it's a lot of times holding... Uh, holding anger inside, holding, you know, and, it, and then it can fester and build, and it's going to end up exploding. That's how I see it happening uh, with Mars, suppressed, trying to suppress Mars energy. Um, and uh, Libra is always, let's make nicey-nicey with everybody, let's make everybody happy. So that could be part of it, too. That could be going back and, like, you know, it could be retreating, definitely, but also I feel more like, what do you call that spiteful where you hold on to hold a grudge you know when you're holding on to something you can like internalize something uh, and i feeling like libra it's never meant to be it's never meant to be anything scorpio do they say some malicious things you know with undertones or whatever sometimes uh but libra not so much you know they they're not they're not like uh that way at all they're more lighthearted light air so, but I think if somebody could say something and you could just take it and internalize it. Um, and the other thing is Saturn going retrograde as well. Well, Saturn, of course, is always old karmic stuff and everything. But the thing uh, that stands out to me with Saturn and Mars, what do they have in common? They're both, to me, very male energy. So um, these two male energies and the rulership of Saturn and Mars, of course, is Capricorn the goat and Aries the ram. And we've been having these squares from Pluto to uh, Uranus with Aries and uh, Capricorn. Um, that's been going on, Uranus and Aries and uh, Pluto and Capricorn. So that's, you know, that's this Aries, Capricorn. And what I think, sometimes when you put them together, they're a square and a zodiac. But just think of the animal representation, the goat and the ram. You could lock horns. They could butt up against each other, you know. And that's that Mars energy is the war energy. I'm going to battle you. I'm going to fight you. You know, um, so there there's an element of that going on with these planets going retrograde. Or you know, your arch, your old nemesis could show up again or something. You know, maybe somebody that you were, something that was going on there causing friction in your life. You know, this past 2013 at those Uranus Pluto squares, this might activate that. That's a that's a part of it too. All right, so let's, you know, there's high degrees everywhere. That's always the finishing up, you know, and the retrogrades is finishing up. So there's some of that element happening here. Um, so these are the male energies, Saturn and Mars. And then, like I said, when I first opened the the wheel, I went right to Lilith. And it seemed to me that all this stuff is hitting Lilith and um, Venus, too. It's a diamond, you know, it's totally a, a spinning diamond. That's what I feel like this is. Um or a top, you know, a spinning top. But Venus also uh, the feminine. In Capricorn, you know, not a very feminine, you know, energy, Saturn's rulership. But this is something, too, this feminine energy. It's Or it's something about the male and the female, you know, the masculine and the feminine. And it's all squares, so it's like, it's not like, oh, we're going to all, it's going to be a big love fest, necessarily. You know, it's going to be... It feels like some confrontation, but it also feels like this beam of light. I keep going back to this. Like, it's going to bring a beam of light that's going to come through. Um, but it feels like it can't come through without struggle. And I also want to say that, because of the Grand Cross, and I also want to say that there's different, you know, things happening to bring it about. This is friction, and it's turbulence. It's like rocky. These square things here, these that look like um, turbulence. Like if this were a cartoon drawing and you had multiple lines like that, you would think that something's like, you know, shaking or on shaky ground. Uh, but then this like shoots through the middle and right down the center and kind of stabilizes it or gives it an access or gives it a some kind of grounding. The feminine does. The Lilith, the Venus, the feminine energy somehow gives some stability to this. And then the Aries South Node just beams the light through. So South Node, again, is the past. South Node in Aries is me, things about me, things that I've internalized, uh, things Aries rules the head, things that are in my head, and maybe not in the outer world as much. So there's that kind of vibe going on. Well, we haven't even looked at the uh, where this is at, the actual point. I got off on all this different tangent, so let's get into it here. 
So sun and moon at 10 degrees of um, Pisces. And that 10 degree has also been, you know, we've been having that a lot uh, throughout the, this year in the new, full, new and full moon videos. That 10 degree, and that's where the Uranus-Pluto square took place last uh, year. So these 10 degrees, you know, and these higher degrees in the galactic center, these are all being emphasized like, kind of over and over again. You know, and Pisces is always, uh, you know, it's the last sign of the zodiac. So it's completion. And we've got this big stellium there with, we've got Neptune, the moon, the sun, Chiron, and um, Juno. So as I said before, I feel like with the Chiron-Juno energy together, it's like it's been easier to heal some of these wounds. I think Juno has brought, with its visit with Chiron, um, you know, healing wounds through love and through a place of knowledge you know, a place of the advanced soul of Pisces. The, you know, this is the elder. This is, the, the Pisces has been through it all, experienced it all. Can look at it from a calm perspective. Is not all immersed in the drama and everything like the Aries is. Pisces has been all the way around the wheel and they're at peace and they're in the last stages of... Um, their cycle, you know, so there, there, there's a wisdom that comes with that. So I think you can look at it, be gentle with yourself, uh, have a wisdom, have a Neptune again, even that's the ruler of Pisces. But I think of Neptune, like the God Neptune, I don't know, I just think of it as, um, you know, this te the teacher, as the, uh, I think of it kind of like the hermit in the, in the tarot, you know, the wise elder that kind of watches over. And I don't know, you don't have to comment if I'm not right, if that's not officially the Hermit's uh, representation, but I, I feel this affinity towards it. That's all I'm trying to say. And um, and it's this wise elder, and that you go to this wise elder, and you get the advice, and you get the peace, and they have the they shine the light. They can see. It's like the lighthouse on the beach. You know, they can see. Uh, they can give illumination, even though it's a new moon. Uh, but uh, illumination with the new moon would be to go on a new path, you know, carrying with you the wisdom of the elders, the wisdom of your own experience in this life, or the wisdom in your own soul through many lives and karmic uh, lessons that you've learned. Yeah, it's sextiling Pluto, but sextile, as we know, is a harmonious uh, energy, so that's a good thing. Um, so it's. I think it's not even about the point of the new moon at 10 degrees, unless, of course, you do have something at that in your natal chart, 10 degrees Pisces or 10 degrees of anything. You know, It's going to be hitting something in your personal planet, and that's why you might want to get a personal reading, too, because we can check into that. But I think it's more about the Pisces energy here and the Pisces collective and the calm. The new moon is focusing our attention on this calm and healing amidst all this whirling and twirling uh, energy. You know, it's like a laser light. This is a laser light show. It reminds me of, I don't know. And the other thing, getting back to these aspects, look at Jupiter shining a light on this Pisces over here. I didn't even catch that. But it's almost like, yeah, the feminine, Cancer. It's uh, understated. It's an exact trine to Jupiter. So there definitely is some action happening here, you know, with the, Ju there's a, uh, the Pluto-Jupiter opposition, and it's sextiling uh, Pisces energy in the new moon point here. It's funny that I kind of overlooked it, and I went right for this, so, because I think it's understated. Even though Pluto is involved, it's understated. It is the feminine. It's Cancer, the moon, and the water signs. That's totally the fe the feminine. Um so maybe there's loud things, loud things in the outer world that are coming at us all. These grab, trying to grab our attention. Old stuff that we're going to dig up again and have the same arguments again. Or if we can get in the quiet, then we can see what might all uh, otherwise be overlooked. That's what I think is the message here because I completely overlooked that. Even after looking at the Aspectarian, I didn't even see. Well, these trines are really light colored. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of magical. I think it's uh, pretty darn magical. Anyways, uh, yeah, Mercury is so, Mercury's gone direct. 
Jupiter's about to go direct too, so it's, it is still in the retrograde, so it is like weakened. It is in a weakened state, but it's about to come forward uh, in a few days with its, its full power. So it's like the masculine planets are going to be going retrograde, and the Jupiter and the feminine is going to be coming forward. So I think that, you know, that I said something about that early on in this reading, and I think that's key too. And the new moon is bringing in the soft feminine energy. But I also feel it's bringing in wisdom. But you're going to have to go to this quiet spot to get it and get away from the noise. Um, and the, the, uh, the partnerships, the power struggles, the man versus woman, you know, those kind of uh, energies. But it doesn't have to be a, a man and a woman. It's just the, the archetypes. Okay, so find the peace. I guess that I'll leave with that final thought. I'm sure this is, there's a lot in this chart. I think I could go on for days about this chart. Uh, but new things are happening. The crocuses are going to be peeking out through the snow any day now, I'm sure. And I'm, for one, I'm looking very much forward to it. <laughs> All right, everyone. This is Vicki Verley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. Thank you so much for watching my videos, donating, um, commenting, liking, sharing. Remember, you are love and beauty incarnate, and I'll talk to you soon. What is Organite? Originally discovered in the 1930s by Wilhelm Reich, organ energy, or etheric energy, is present in living things, including the human body. Reich proposed that illness occurs when our etheric body is out of balance, and that positive organ energy could realign the etheric field, thus facilitating healing and balance of one's life force, chi or prana. It has since been scientifically proven that energy called piezoelectricity, meaning electricity resulting from pressure, is created by the compression of certain materials such as quartz crystals, wood, salt, sugar, ceramics, and bones. As the resin cures in an organite piece, it shrinks and compresses the organic matter contained within. The energy emitted creates a positive energy generator. You really can feel the energy coming forth from these pieces. Organite clears the air and neutralizes negative emotions as well as electronic clutter from our high-tech devices. Each organite piece is lovingly hand-created using intuitive pairing of materials to enhance and raise vibration and aid in ascension and a spiritual awakening. I use materials from nature, including the bark from a sacred willow for grounding and gold flakes to emulate the golden light basking down from the higher dimensions. Visit my Etsy shop for a wide selection of handmade organ pieces especially designed for spiritual growth, including heart opening, chakra alignment and activation, and more. Visit www.organenergyflow.etsy.com to see more beautiful organ pieces. And remember, you are love and beauty incarnate.